his children, generation of uh, truly 21st century. We belong to 20th century, yes. generation of 20th century. <laughs> So hopeful for us today, reason, I feel, in the first century, the church uh, beginning. So if we make some effort, uh, and then mainly through education, then the generation, uh, the 21st century, within, I think, the next one generation, perhaps I think one generation, that means 30, 50 years, then we can, we maybe, we can see the better world, more peaceful, more compassionate. Mm. All hope on you. Please, you know. Not only is this group, but the entire uh, seven billion human beings, I think each have a different face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even twin, uh, there are some slight differences. Uh, uh, but, but basically, entire seven billion human beings are same human beings. Mentally, uh, emotionally, physically, we are the same. So here at this moment, uh, I, Tibetan, uh, born in very cold, high altitude, and some remote area. Uh, but we are the same. In spite, some people call me living Buddha, as, as you mentioned, but the way I born, same way. <laughs> and worst thing, I think in our village, we have the tradition, birth should not take in our room. So in Kasa, Simshashasa, Kaushet. So this living Buddha born in Kaushet. <laughs> uh, so we are saying the differences since my childhood I trained or I learned about our inner world, about our mind and emotion how to tackle emotion. Uh, since childhood, I learned these things. Uh, at the beginning, I have no interest. I'm a very, very lazy student to learn these things. Oh. So the, uh, my tutor, one occasion, he had to get one whip to threaten me. Un unless you study well, he may use that <laughs> whip. So I often used to tell people, at that time, you see, my uh, elder brother also used to study with me. So two whips. <laughs> one whip, yellow. One whip, ordinary. So I often used to tell people, the yellow whip, suppose a student, holy student, Dalai Lama. Uh, so they whip also yellow color, something holy. But I know if the yellow whip use, uh, I know no differences of holy pain. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So then gradually, of course, the situation also, you see, become more difficult. Uh, and my whole life, I think, carry a uh, difficult life. But then, during those years, the thing which I learned, immense benefit to keep peace of mind, no matter how difficult it is. So I, uh, I convince the problem as a Buddhist concept is a samsara. Uh, the very nature of samsara is problem. So, uh, but then, in spite you remain in samsara, but through mentally, uh, you can keep peaceful mind. And then, the practice of uh, Bodhicitta, practice of altruism, infinite altruism. Even to the troublemaker, it seems uh, your dear friend, actually entire sentient being, uh, usually we call mother sentient being. Uh, each morning, I uh, practice the Kasoda regenerate sorry. Samji, in that form, yeah. No. Uh, His Holiness is talking about uh, you know cultivating the altruism on a daily basis. Oh. So. See, I. So as a result, is an entire sentient being. In my mind, no evil force. All are sentient beings. So since a uh, few years, when I carry some sort of puja, you know, mm, abhishekha, some kasada. Uh, empowerment, standard empowerment. Oh. So there is sort of tradition at the beginning, expel evil force. Now since last few years, I didn't practice that. No evil force. These also sentient beings, like me, they also want joyful life, happiness, do not want suffering. So these are same human beings. As the Buddha say, we all have the Buddha nature. So we cannot make distinction, even force. So now I never practice that part. Uh, as a result of my practice, bodhicitta. So that uh, entire sort of sentient being, uh, very dear in my mind, and appears uh, very sort of dear brothers, sisters, or kasoda, like that. So you know, okay. So in our prayer, um, there are these lines which say, um, you know, uh, inviting all sentient beings, I mean, uh, having generated this altruism, which is that, uh, thinking of becoming a Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings, I call upon all sentient beings as my guests to this feast of enlightenment. So, uh, I notice now, you see, training our mind since my childhood, now really uh, very, very useful to keep peace of mind. As a result, uh, you see, my health also, uh, in spite now 84 year old, the physical, still okay. Uh, so, then whenever, wherever I go, I always look any sentient being, any human being, just like my brother, sister, no stranger. So the result, your own mind becomes something very positive. If you too much emphasis, me, 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 
then uh, when we met some people suspect distrust fear if you consider all the sentient being uh, our mother sentient being and the dearest and our guest so then whenever we met uh, someone you see we feel uh, very close Because the Shanda S Shanda Deva say, "Jigden dungen chini wo tiku rangden dole chung." Jigden Deva chini wo tiku Shanda dole chungs. So Shanda Deva, in his guide to the Bodhisattva way of life, says, um, "Whatever suffering there is in the world, all come through wishing others to have suffering, and, uh, and whatever happiness there is in the world, uh, all come from wishing others to be happy." Hmm. This would be. And then after that, he uh, goes on to say, uh, if you are not able to switch your own happiness and joy with the suffering of others, um, leave alone reaching Buddhahood. Even in this cycle of existence, this unenlightened existence, you will not have happiness. So whether believer or non-believer, Uh, we need warm-heartedness, more sort of the compassionate feeling, mind, for your own interest. More compassionate person, himself or herself, as I mentioned earlier, mentally more peaceful. And the one important is when your mind more peaceful. Then, uh, when you heard some uh, negative information come here, then you feel, okay, that's a human nature. Uh, will not, not develop irritation or some negative criticism or something. Uh, if too much emphasis, I, 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 then the reaction is anger, like that. So not thinking that way, but respect all human, all sentient being. So therefore, the, uh, in order to develop peace of mind, the very important, uh, the proper way to tackle our emotion. So these days, I sort of telling, I expressing the hygiene of physical in our school, even in kindergarten. To, in, in your study, do you, you also have some sort of knowledge how to take care of your body, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Hmm? Hygiene of physical. So now we should include, we should develop the, beside hygiene of physical, hygiene of emotion must be there. Oh, uh, hygiene of emotion, you see, take, since childhood, kindergarten level, you see, uh, uh, healthy body, but too much disturbed here, will not be happy. S healthy physical, important, at the same time, healthy mind, very important. Irrespective, now this is part of education, not religion. And based on a scientific finding, scientific finding. Now scientists, they say basic human nature is more compassionate. It is quite sort of uh, logical. You see, we're born, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, from mother, and we survived with mother's uh, affection and take care and a mother's milk. Without that, I think uh, after birth, without a mother, without a mother's care, or someone, someone else's care, then within a few days, we'll die. And then, more important, 
Uh, the other day, I also you see, mentioned basic human nature is more compassionate. Another reason, the way we born uh, at young age, the mother and some 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 so, 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 some other sort of affection taking care, very essential. Hmm? Then those individual who received maximum affection from their parent, from their friend. In deep insight, some kind of more peaceful, more self-confidence. So that experience remain whole life. Those individual at a young age lacking affection from mother or from their uh, sort of friends, then in deep insight, some kind of sense of insecurity always there. So then, then in our daily life, uh, meet people with smile, you feel happy. And a smile, we must distinction. The scastic smile, <laughs> sometimes fear. <laughs> and then diplomatic smile. <laughs> also, you see, create some suspicion. <laughs> so, so genuine smile, even dogs, I think, have some ability, distinction, genuine <laughs> smile or artificial smile. I think dogs make distinction. So genuine smile, they are, I feel happy. Uh, then at the time of death, the other day I mentioned, you see, you uh, surrounded with golds, diamonds, and uh, and, and bank dollars. Uh, at the time of dying, you feel no longer use these things. Even more worry. Now, who will use these, these monies or these things? So, more worry. But at the, at the moment of dying, surrounded with friend who really showing affection, then the dying person feel much happier. So, human loving kindness is the beginning of our life. And till our death, that's very important. Now scientists say uh, constant anger, constant uh, stress is actually our immune system. Eating. Uh, eating, eating. eating our immune system. So therefore, uh, these are the scientific sort of scientific sort of, sort of, sort of explanation. Basic human nature is more compassionate. Then furthermore, we are social animal. Any social animal, individual's survival depend on the community. It's very, very clear. Dogs or uh, uh, cats. Cat, I don't know. <laughs> some cat, some cat, you see, goes lonely, uh, waiting some bird or some mice. <laughs> <laughs> so in any way, generally, I think uh, any social animal, you see, they are very survival, depend on the rest of the community. So we are social animal. Uh, see, individuals' survival or joyfulness, happy life, entirely depend on the community. Firstly, family, then community. Now today's world, I think whole world, actually one community. Economically, global economy, no national boundary. Uh, now on top of that, the global warming. You see, no, I say they making distinct, distinction, this continent or that continent or this nation or that nation. So now time come. We have to think entire uh, seven billion human beings. And then on the other hand, 
Nobody want problem. Yet, many problems which we are facing, even this very moment, we are peaceful. But, you see, and at the few hundred, I think about, about hundreds of miles, the Kashmir problem there. And then, beside there, behind there, the Syrian, this problem. And then North, Afghanistan. Same human being, killing each other. And the worst thing, in the name of religion, and this Muslim country, Shia and the Sunni, same Muslim, same Allah, same Quran, five times prayer, same, but small differences, Shia and Sunni killing each other. All these are lack of sort of recognition, the other as human brothers, sisters. Religion is personal matter. So when I, you see, a daily, when I look television, and then, how many American here? Oh, okay. Now the uh, Mexican border. <laughs> many poor people now waiting there and some dying. Same human brothers, sisters. And basically, a Mexican, not your enemy, but your neighbor. It's much better to live is peacefully. And this war, I think, creates some uncomfortable feeling. Individuals are mischievous individuals that you can deal accordingly. But basically, I think America, symbol of free world, leading nation of free world. So, oh, when people think about America, I think should get some feeling or, and hope. America, when, when people think America, some kind of fear, that's not good. So, so my number one commitment is uh, believing myself as a human being. Uh, uh, and we all, as I mentioned earlier, mentally, emotionally, physically, we are the same. So social animal, is we should uh, promote human compassion, irrespective believer or non-believer, uh, and mainly based on scientific sort of finding. That's important. I think out of seven billion, over one billion non-believer. So if we say compassion is important because Jesus Christ say, and Buddha say, then those non-believer say, oh, don't care. Uh, but uh, on a scientific basis, if we say, then they pay more attention. So that, in this country, uh, thousand years, you see, they're describing secular ethics, not based on religion, uh, but uh, through sort of the common sense, use common sense, uh, uh, and sort of, because I educate, Warm heartedness is important. So that's my number one commitment. Then number two commitment is I am Buddhist. Uh, so the religious tolerance is very essential. All major world religious tradition, in spite of different philosophical sort of view, but all carry 
same message, message of love. For example, theistic religion, uh, we all created by God. Uh, what is what kind of God? Full of love, compassion. That's our Father. Seven billion human beings created by that kind of Father. So that very powerful uh, to bring conviction. We must be more compassionate children of God. We should be. If God uh, himself angry one, then we, we, we can say <laughs> God himself, you see, <laughs> quite angry, angry God. So since he creates us, so anger is normal. But if you truly believe creator, God, infinite love, and the entire seven billion human being is actually children of same father. Very powerful, very good. Then uh, Jainism, Buddhism, and some part of Sankhism, no God, no creator, but rather self-creation. Here also, you see, everything depends on your own action. So therefore, in this country, India, concept of ahimsa, non-violence, over 3,000 years, that's the main sort of spiritual message, ahimsa, non-violence. In order to carry non-violence more effectively, Karuna, compassion. These two things are over 3,000 years India's tradition. Really wonderful. And then gradually, the Jainism, I think, further expand. And then Buddha, Buddhism uh, has created a lot of, sort of complicated philosophy, but the main message is love, Karuna. So as a result, I think, look, India, modern India, the large number of Muslims there, but no problem. And I never heard problem among Indian Muslim, Sunni and Shia. I never heard. So therefore, and then uh, Indian Muslim, very much respect, other tradition, live together. India, over billion populated nation, but uh, religious harmony is still there very much. Over 3,000 years, uh, different religious tradition there and live together harmoniously, mutual respect, and some kind, sometimes mutual learning, like that. So it shows me uh, it is possible religious harmony. So my number two commitment is try to promote religious harmony. Then number three commitment, I am Tibetan. Uh, I have the name of Dalai Lama. So the reality Six million Tibetan, trust me, believe me. So I have a moral responsibility. So now regarding political matter, since uh, 2001, I retired, totally retired. We already have uh, elected political leadership, so they look after. My responsibility regarding Tibet is preservation of Tibetan culture. I really feel, you know, uh, eighth century. The, I think first, firstly, uh, seventh century, Tibetan, Kasari, Madam, Madam, I think recently 
one sort of Chinese ecologist, because of that, because of archaeologist, someone, right? The existence of Tibetan human being over 50,000 or something, very early. Uh, so then, an early period is, I think, a Tibetan uh, way of life, quite similar to that of Mongolian. Sword, spear, and animal. <laughs> Whenever some cause of, cause of the opposition come, crash. <laughs> so, according to some Chinese history book, you see, they mentioned uh, in 7th century, 8th century, in those sort of period, uh, a tree or a kingdom, Chinese kingdom, uh, uh, Mongol kingdom, Tibetan kingdom. The Chinese, anyway, is more civilized. So you see, they pay more attention about the political matter, these things. Mongol pay more attention about warfare than Tibetan king, Tibetan sort of kingdom uh, pay more attention about religion. And so on, inshallah, I need you to see look at it. It's not Tibetan as a human beings as a habitant. 40,000 years ago. 40, Quite old. So, so then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, seventh century, the Tibetan king uh, married with Tang, so the uh, Tang what's the name? Uh, princess of Tang dynasty. Uh, and I think uh, through that way first sort of introduced Buddha Dharma in Tibet, 7th century. So sometimes I feel a little bit funny. The, the 7th century, King Songza Gambo married with Chinese princess, so certainly he enjoyed Chinese food. <laughs> hmm? uh, and also he learned some Chinese cultural heritage. Uh, but uh, he found two complicated Chinese letter. <laughs> so he invented Tibetan script, so copy from Indian Devanagari, alphabet, kaka kanga, cha cha chanya, like that. So he uh, developed unique Tibetan script. Then 8th century, the Tibetan king, uh, his mother, I think Chinese. Oh, so very close link. But then he uh, prefer Buddha Dharma, which he should bring directly from Indian, uh, at that time, Nalendra institution is the main sort of institution of Buddha Dharma. So he invited uh, Shandar Rakshita, great scholar in, in the logical field, great scholar. He wrote some uh, logical text, re, logician, re, logical text, text of logical, logic, uh, and then philosophy, Madhimika philosophy. Uh, he monk. Mm. So he invited so, you see, seems, you see, Shandar Rakshita, you see, introduced Nalanda tradition. It seems not only introduced, but also he give us the responsibility for preservation of that tradition. So then eventually Nalanda ruined. Uh, but Nalanda tradition we kept over a thousand years. So sometimes I jokingly teasing 
my Indian friend. Traditionally, Indian, our teacher. Now, modern time, it seems we become teacher. <laughs> Indian, you see, neglect all this knowledge. Not only so prayer or these things, but knowledge of tradition. I think, they, like quantum physics, knowledge of tradition, very much sort of alive. As a student of knowledge of tradition, we know about quantum physics. When I discuss with modern quantum physicists, our knowledge is much better, much deeper. <laughs> <laughs> All this uh, from knowledge tradition we learned. And then psychology. As far as psychology, sometimes maybe too, because of too much, because of presumptuous, right? Presumptuous, you see. Some the I describe modern psychology when we discuss with them, it seems a modern psychology looks like kindergarten level compared ancient Indian psychology. Indian psychology is highly developed. Okay. So these things we kept. And including quantum physics and the psychology, when we explain not based on quotation but based on reason. Buddha himself, you see, uh, made clear, oh, my follower, big shoes, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. That's very scientific way. So some Chinese uh, Buddhist scholar, uh, uh, they say uh, Buddha Dharma, Buddhism, according to the Nalanda tradition, is very scientific religion. It's true. We very much based on reason, not faith. So when we discuss with scientists, it becomes be very useful, mutual learning. They learn, uh, like psychology, uh, emotion, these things, we learn from their finding. How old are Kasuda? Cosmos, Kasuda, mean? Cosmos. Cosmos. And these things. It's a very useful information from scientists. Although some Buddhist texts mentioned about cosmology or these things, but some are, uh, they, they say, world is flat. Uh, and sun and moon, more or less same size, at same level, goes around the Mount Miru. Actually, nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so we can say, oh, this is wrong. Sometimes I used to jokingly expressing the, the text which mentioned these things. The, the writer of that text Bosuband, uh, naturally, when he writes this, this text, uh, so he naturally, at that time, he a little bit old, so his eyes are not very good. So he, <laughs> when you see cloudy day, he tried to look the size of sun. <laughs> it seems to him, not much differences, size of moon and sun. <laughs> so in his writing, he mentioned these things. Uh, then Mount Meru, I usually say telling people publicly, uh, I have been several times from here to Europe, Europe to America, America to Japan, or Hawaii, Hawaii to Japan, Japan to India. I never saw Mount Miru. <laughs> if Mount Miru there, I think millions of people going that way must be someone should 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 see Mount Miru. Nothing. So we can uh, analyze things. Are uh, script some script mentioned that, but don't care. 
analyze, analyze. So that's the way of logical approach. Okay. So this knowledge, I think we depend. Now today, whole world, the Nalanda tradition, Nalanda knowledge available only Tibetan tradition. And also, it seems to me very clear that the Tibetan language is the best language to explain psychology, philosophy, and these uh, uh, logic, these things. Because before Buddhism reached Tibet, one Tibetan scholar ex expressed before India's light reached Tibet, Tibet, in spite of land of snow, white, bright, but in spite of that, Tibet, dark. After light of India reached Tibet, then Tibet became bright. It's very true, very true. So we, uh, so, so then eventually, the Shanta Rakshita insist, advice, since you have your own language, so instead of study or learning Sanskrit or Pali, it should now translate into Tibetan. So uh, eighth century, I think, start translation. So at that time, Tibetan language, very primitive. So a uh, new Sanskrit word uh, and they develop new word, Tibetan. So now today, Sanskrit and Tibetan language is most kind of closest like that. So Sanskrit, now more or less uh, that language. Some scholars uh, may know something, may use, otherwise no. So among the living language, Tibetan language is the uh, best language uh, uh, to explain this difficult subject. So my sort of responsibility is try to preserve this knowledge, including language, like that. And politically, you see, the historically, Tibet is a separate country. But world is changing. I very much admire the spirit of European Union. Common interest is more important. Now, today's British Prime Minister is a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's really facing some problems now. <laughs> she's really facing. The latest situation, Kajito. Parliament won't take Chazan Singh's exit to that. So, European Union, I really feel the Kaza, French. Uh, de Gaulle and German Adana during wartime arch enemy and historically French and German as a very much negative attitude at First World War, Second World War. But then after Second World War, they realize common interest is more important than national individual national interest. So they set up European Union. So I often, you see, exp expressing the same spirit of European Union, I think eventually should start in Latin America and also in Africa, not the whole Africa, firstly, Northern Africa, then Central Africa, and then Southern Africa like that and the Middle East also. I think some kind of uh, uh, common kasa. Ka. Union. Oh, union, union. This moment, I, I feel some kind of unrealistic wishful thinking. <laughs> As eventually, Saudi Arabia and Iran should create union. <laughs> That was silly. One follower of Shia, one follower of Sunni. I 
I think uh, the, the, uh, to me, the, the Iran, uh, no matter how bad, but still, democratic country, elected. Saudi Arabia, not like that. <laughs> I think Saudi Arabia seems to see no proper the rule of law, isn't it? Everything in one family, king, like that. So in any way, uh, I really admire European Union. Therefore, uh, we, uh, since an early, early the, the 50s and 60s, we raised a bit an issue at the UN. Uh, and then one occasion, Pandit Nehru ad advised me, of course, I have very close sort of contact with Pandit Nehru. Uh, I seek his advice, and he also advised me uh, like that. So then he, once he told me, America will not go to war with China in order to liberate Tibet. It's true. It's very realistic. So then, but the Nehru told me, sooner or later, you have to deal with Chinese government. No use raising the issue at the UN. And so, 1974, we decided not now also try to raise the issue at the UN. We wait, and then we not sort of thinking independence of Tibet. So 74, we decided. Then 78, Ding Xiaoping indicate he want uh, me, he want because of meet one my representative. Uh, so we develop direct contact with Ding Xiaoping. And then things are being made very clear. Except independence, anything can be discussed. So now, we simply trying to seek the Chinese constitution. You see, mentioned certain right. And also area, the constitution recognized Tibetan area, uh, Tibetan autonomous region, Tibetan Kasa. District, autonomous district, autonomous prefecture, county. and county. county. Autonomous county. So Chinese constitution recognized as a Tibetan area. Then this area should have equal right to preserve their own culture, their own language. Then the practically also a Tibetan, you see, uh, wants more material development. Uh, sometimes I jokingly telling, I teasing Tibetan, uh, quite, quite big number of Tibetan uh, illegally immigrated to uh, Europe, mainly France or Belgium, and then Canada, and then America. So these people uh, are not seeking spirituality but seeking dollar. <laughs> so Tibetan, you see, uh, wants or loves dollar money. So remain within the people's world of China. It is our interest, the China, now economically, uh, say, because of the highly developed. So already, you see, in Tibet, there are a lot of material, lot of, sort of development uh, road, airport, and buildings like that. So, uh, that's our benefit. And then China, the today, number of Buddhists there. So we can share our knowledge with them. So, that's mutual benefit. The, in modern time, the real meaning of Independence is not much meaning. Better live together as a union, part of a union. And I like the, the Chinese word, 
中华人民共和国共和国哦 ，Union。那 India、East India、South India、West India、Central India。Different language, different script, but all、uh, live in the union. That's wise. One occasion in East India, Kavadi,、uh, Ka Manipur. Once I have been there,、uh, some reporter asked me their independence. Then I told them, you should think more sort of. Because of the more holistic way,、and、then the Manipur small country independence,、uh, not much meaning. Much better remain Union of India. So like that, we historically different, but we are very much sort of committed, willing to、uh, remain within the People's Republic of China. Provided they should respect Tibetan culture, like that. So the so then,、uh, and the political matter, as I mentioned earlier, I totally retired.、Uh, then my main concern is preservation of Tibetan culture, including Tibetan language, and then environment. One my、uh, Chinese friend, ecologist, he. Told me, according his sort of observation, the effect for global warming from Tibetan plateau is as much as South Pole and North Pole. So he described Tibet plateau is third pole. So、uh, the Tibetan environment, something very important. Uh, so then,、uh, recently, Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang somewhere,、right. uh, he visited Tibet, and he also expressed、uh, the preservation of ecology. Wonderful, wonderful. And many years ago,、uh, the Zhou Rongqin as Prime Minister,、uh, at that time, you see, the lot of flood. Is、uh, from Tibet,、uh, so he gives some instruction. The area, this river,、uh, Mekong River, and the Yellow River, Yangtze. Yang Yangtze River, you see, the、uh, forest must keep, should not deforest, deforest. So ecologic, ecological,、uh, the. It is something very important, not only Tibetan themselves, but also to almost the whole Asia. The China, Yangtze River, in Dzhukaza, Ka, Dzhukaza Yangtze River, Why Dzhukaza Yellow, Machu, Yellow River, and Kare in Chukuti, Dzhukaza, Yangtze River. Which Vietnam Dry, ah, Mekong Mekong River, and then India, Burma Butra, ah, and then Ganges River, or and Pakistan side, Kasa Chukchi, Sindh, Indus, Kasa, Indus River. So all these major river come from Tibetan, or say the mountains, Tibetan area. So sometimes I jokingly telling my Indian friend,、uh, we are supplier of water to India. <laughs> If something goes wrong, ecological problem, then billions of Indian then really facing difficult,、uh, no water. So the global warming is quite serious. I really wondering these young children when they reach their age sixty seventy. What kind of world? Global warming, something very serious. I notice 
last 60 years, this very place, 96 day I came here. 59 came to India, one year at Musuri, then 60 summer I came here. That winter, lot of snow. And then each year, snow less, less, less. So over 60 years, some change. Now this, uh, this winter seems to more snow, oh, fortunately. But so within the uh, last few decades, you see the uh, weather change significantly, you see, happen. When I was passing through Afghanistan, there are many signs of dry uh, lakes. Gradually, now uh, Tibet also become like desert without water, possible. So global warming is something very, very important. But our American president is don't care <laughs> about global warming, <laughs> isn't it? It is quite sad. He withdraw from Gaza. Paris climate Paris climate Oh. Yes. Now some questions. <laughs> Question answer. Yes, first you. How how does it feel like to be reincarnated? Kasa. <laughs> reincarnated. Uh, nothing. <laughs> the name of Dalai Lama or reincarnated is just uh, people create people creation. Myself, as I mentioned. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a human being. And I may say, I'm quite a normal human being. <laughs> Your Holiness, um, I've been contemplating the concept of emptiness, and I was hoping if you could please share some insight um, to how we can relate to emptiness in a modern context. That's the key thing as far as Buddhism is concerned, and particularly Nalanda tradition. The, in Nalanda tradition, the Lonsu Pusa, the Chinese language, Lonsu Pusa, and Nagarjuna. He also they thoroughly explained about Buddha's teaching of emptiness. So now emptiness, not of the nothingness, but like quantum physics, you see, quantum physics say not nothingness, but things does not exist as appears. Appearance is something exists there. But if we investigate nothing, so things does not exist as appears. There is a big gap, appearances and reality. Now the emptiness telling what's the ultimate reality and nothing. If we because uh, of the physical, because of the parts, dissect, ka. dissect. Let it get no, if we I mean, take something and dissect it, nothing. And the quantum physics not yet reach about mind. That's what they call observer. Now in Buddhist tradition, they also investigate what's mind. Mind, not physical. But uh, yes. the, the mind is positive in, in terms of continuity of the streams. So 
mind, so-called mind, is the something jit shiur chaje chaje mind. The chaje demo zor bda. Yes. So when we talk about mind, it's not just a, a single entity; it's a continuation of moments. So we can talk about a whole mind, which is made up so of these moments. So when we talk continuation, they automatically involve past, present, future. Then present is the basis of past and future. Now present, if we further go, present century, present decade, present year, present month, present week and day, and hour and minute, second, no present. Second, one second past, one second future. Where is, where is present? No, no present. Then without present, very difficult to say past and future. So that's just, as well, the, uh, on the on the roughly appearances we say continuation of mind, but if you go detail nothing. So, uh, so now the Madhyamika philosophy Nagarjuna says, if we investigate, if we analyze, nothing independently exists, but just mere designation. That, you see, uh, concept to Buddhist try to, or say they, try to defeat our, our emotion which believe things are independently exist there. That basis of exaggeration. One of my American uh, psychologist, great psychologist, his age now, when my last meeting, a few years ago, his age already 110 or something. What's that mean? Aaron Beck. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Beck. Hmm? You see, he, few decades, you see, he deal with people whose mind too much disturbed by anger. So he told me, those angry people, when they feel anger, the object which they feel angry appears something very negative. But the reality, 90% of that negativeness is mental projection. This is exactly now Madhiva philosophy would say. So now antidote is to analyze things does not exist as appears. Ultimately, your own kasoda designation. So the anger, attachment come, things appears something absolute, and good and bad also absolute. Recently, I heard one Chinese uh, student who uh, studied quantum physics. Uh, he you see, express the, when he think about nothing exists objectively, uh, that effect his sort of also the extreme view, good or bad. That's exactly, you see, the purpose of Nalinda, this uh, Madhimika philosophy. I also practice that daily. So, very, very helpful. One part of practice is altruism. One part of practice is nothing exists as appears. So Nagarjuna explained interdependent, interconnected. Nothing exists independently. Everything depends on other factor. So that also, you see, the approach, more realistic approach, things. Uh, it exists, but exists due to many other factors, including your own mind. So then our uh, anger, attachment, these happen. Its very nature is 
entirely you know, sort of believe things exist there independently, then attachment, anger comes. For example, uh, usually we develop anger towards our enemy, so-called enemy. But then you're angry towards the enemy's physical or enemy's mind. Then the anger feel confused, isn't it? Oh, like that. And similarly, when we feel I, 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 where is I? Not this physical. Uh, I can say my physical, my mind. So still, there is I. Where is I? I here? No. Here? No. Difficult. I is there. But if you investigate, we cannot find. So finally, combination of physical and mind is just merely designated as I, self. But Indian tradition, Atma, then there is independent I is there. And the journalism, Western, Western culture, soul, also more or less independent self. The Buddhist Anatma theory, no Atma. But when I explain about rebirth, I found I found very useful the concept of Atma. <laughs> Recently, well, I think I think two years ago, uh, in South India, I have sort of or city, uh, or city useful. Uh, discussion with one Indian Hindu sadhu, good scholar, and uh, very good. He's serving people, particularly student. Wonderful. So he invited me. I went there. And then I told him, practice of kasa, shudim. Shila, morality. No, practice of morality and practice of uh, single-pointed mind, and practice of the analytical meditation, generally same, Hindu, Buddhist, same. So we are truly spiritual brothers. And then differences, A Hindu believe soul, Buddhist no believe soul. So that our private business. You believe, oh, soul. I do not believe soul. So that's our private business. <laughs> <laughs> so similarly, believe creator, God, or not, private business. We both, human beings, we should pay more attention about love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, self-discipline. Next question. Your Holiness, thank you very much for your powerful words today and funky glasses. Mm -hmm. I like them. I like your glasses. <laughs> I see. <laughs> then, then without glasses. It's even more so. <laughs> Yes. I'd like to ask you about compassion. You spoke of all, all of us having a compassionate soul, but many times it feels like there are acts of lack of compassion and that cap compassion is blocked between mm -hmm. many individuals, countries, situations. How do we unblock compassion? Now that's a very important question. As I mentioned earlier, basic human nature, more compassionate. Oh like these young children, they don't care about, you see, different religious tradition or different nationality. So long, play together. One time, I visited uh, Switzerland, Pesolozzi. Some Palestinian children, Jewish uh, children, 
live together, nothing. So at a young age like that, they don't care. What is the differences? Gradually, when we join our education, our school, then you see, not much talking about our inner, deeper human value. Simply, you see, talking about money, about materialistic life. Now, that's, I feel, existing modern education system is not complete. Uh, it's very much oriented about material value. So now, modern education, as I men briefly mentioned, should include about education uh, inner value. So that children at a young age, uh, ch basic human value, very much alive. They need that. Now, once join education, the further sort of explanation, the warm-heartedness is very important for your health, for your happy family, for your happy community. These should teach, should include. And then furthermore, the Indian psychology, as I mentioned earlier, you see there, in, in the West, so when we say uh, consciousness, they only uh, sensory level, not much talking about chit or mind. So training of mind is chit, not eye consciousness, ear consciousness. The five senses of consciousness, uh, because of the active, the mental consciousness, they are uh, then in dream time, sensorial consciousness no longer, mental consciousness there. Then deep sleep without uh, dream, even further deeper consciousness. So sometimes you know, it can be possible in dreaming, dream time, thinking, uh, some spiritual practice is more effective because the sensorial consciousness no longer active. Like that. So I think uh, it is important to uh, make distinction, different level of consciousness. And real the trouble, uh, anger, attachment, jealousy, these come or oh, the because of the main mainstream of consciousness, not sensorial. Like that. I think two person, one person uh, seeing someone a very dear, and one person see, see that very negative. But I consciousness same. Mentally, one is considered negative, one considered positive. So training of mind is a mental level, not consciousness. So it is very important to make distinction, different level of consciousness, mind. Uh, since these troublemaker, anger, hatred, these related with main consciousness. So method also must develop in main consciousness, not sensorial. Okay. Yes. Let's do one more. Anyone in the back? Hi, Your Holiness. So I have a question. Um, as you mentioned, we are all the same. And I believe that a question that we've been struggling all our lives is a sense of self-identity, even though we say that we are brothers and sisters. But as you mentioned earlier on as well, we see things differently. We have different filters. So how do we recognize and fine tune? Should I? I should. They should. Cook your, cook your, cook your. The cost for the animal. Yeah. 
So how do we recognize and fine tune the filter that we've been using to reflect a true self or identity? Because there's been so many labels that we face since growing up. So how do we find a true voice? As I mentioned earlier, see, we are social animal. Each individual's future or happiness depends on the community. Now, today's reality is Eastern world, their future depends on West. Western world's future depends on East. Similarly, South, North, like that. So, and then I think we too much emphasis different nationality, different races, and India, I think caste system <laughs> is really outdated. <laughs> so in any way, you see too much emphasis, differences, it's a source of problem. No gain. Think about oneness of human being, oneness of whole world. Uh, that is the realistic, and as I mentioned earlier, the European Union, the thinking, oneness of European. There are not sort of emphasis, French, Germany, uh, uh, I, one one my friend, the von Weizsäcker, great scientist, physicist, physicist, quantum physicist, he told me when he was young, every German eye, French is their enemy. Similarly, French eye, German is their enemy. When we sort of, uh, then you see, 90s, 1990s, he told me, Nowadays, that kind of sort of uh, perception, perception. Uh, perception no longer. German, French, just our neighbor. So like that, There's too much emphasis with German, French, killing. What benefit? <coughs> you see, oneness of European, much benefit. So further extent, oneness of human being. It is possible. It is very good. Now today's reality, we really need the sense of oneness of human being. Since a lot of problem, including killing, is on the, on the basis of differences, different nationality, different religion, cause problem. So the only remedy is go deeper way, we are same human being. So that's the only way. If we think deeper level, we are same human being, they want happiness, I want happiness, my future depends on them, uh, then killing is no longer relevant. It's much better, live together, so I think those American company which produce weapon, I think eventually should close. <laughs> uh, last question is, yes. when can we come back? <laughs> That's up. Yeah. Um, come on. Come, Jean, you're gonna say thank you. Oh. I, I, yeah. Next week? Oh. Um, <laughs> my wife would like to say thank you. Okay. Your Holiness, thank you so much. We are so grateful. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Seek and you shall find. And we have come, we are seekers, and we have come and sought uh, your wisdom. And hopefully with your wisdom, we will want to plant seeds so that we will mm. grow good fruits uh, of peace and love. So um, thank you for being part of thank our you. journey and our, our life journey. Thank you. Thank you. I very much encouraged you see people from different country, different culture, different language, but come here as a human being and thinking more deeper level of our value.
That's hopeful sign. Hopeful sign. So now sometimes I feel my age, now 84. So not many years now. Perhaps another 10 years, then 94. <laughs> then too old. <laughs> but it, it seems my mind still, I think, okay. <laughs> the uh, 94 year old wheelchair mind quite clear. <laughs> and then I can talk, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, in any way, you see, uh, now my life now ending. So, uh, uh, so long, so I alive, and according to my own experience, some of these thoughts, you see more and more people showing interest and implement and further think. That's the purpose of my life. My daily prayer, my physical, uh, my speech, my mind, dedicated well-being of other. And furthermore, I'm a monk, no family. <laughs> so quite good. <laughs> Otherwise, you see, my children, grandchildren, their marriage, a lot of problems. <laughs> So, so, so some occasion, I told some uh, Western monk, Western who become Buddhist monk, I told them, you see, uh, uh, when, when you feel a little bit lonely, you should look those family who have a lot of problems. <laughs> you know? And uh, I have, you see, some my friend. When my first visit to America, one wife, and two uh, few children. Then after a few years, another visit, another wife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then, then another occasion, third wife. <laughs> that also is a source of, source of Kasada, a problem, isn't it? And especially those children. So I told these people, this is sort of source of our encouragement, symbol, symbol Buddhist monk. <laughs> uh, Thank you. <laughs>